What's going on, guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com. In today's episode, we're going to be sharing with you guys not only just a holiday strategy guide, but also a dining out strategy guide. I'll say it like this. If you're somebody that wants to learn how to literally fit in your favorite foods or you have any kind of special occasions or birthdays, anniversaries or anything, this right here is going to be your number one source for guidance and how to do so where you can learn how to fit in your favorite foods and honestly not sabotage your own results. This is going to be a good one. We're going to have several different people speaking on today's uh, podcast. And so if you're listening to this on either Spotify or iTunes, definitely make sure you go over to the YouTube channel Heartletics and um, watch this because we're going to get into a special little uh, PowerPoint presentation. I decided to use my uh, my uh, my middle school skills and a, a PowerPoint. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Cool. Can you guys let me know if everybody can see this okay? Yep. Awesome. Let me get this bigger. Great, great, great. Everybody can still see this okay? Yep. Awesome. Let me go ahead. This perfect. Okay. So guys, dine out and stay fit. Today, once again, is going to be your number one source for how to fit in your favorite foods, how to not sabotage your results, and most importantly, how to have peace of mind. And I think that's the biggest thing that we're going to be talking about and going over is how to have peace of mind. Because at least personally for me, uh, all throughout the course of my life, it was one of those things where there's the good foods, there's the bad foods. And at the end of the day, you're kind of like, man, oh, should I eat this or should I eat this? And then what happens? Typically you go, you know, eating those fun favorite foods that you enjoy, but then the next days, you know, you feel kind of guilty about it. Right. And then try to burn it all off or, you know, do something where you're not eating the next day. And I, I hate hearing when people do that all the time. So I decided, you know, with our team to just create a podcast episode for you guys going over a step-by-step -step approach on how to literally dine out and stay fit. So the first thing that you guys need to know, and this is pro tips, okay? This is not mandatory. This is just tips, okay? Before and after. And when it goes into calorie balance, you know, like obviously if you're gonna have, you know, a holiday, a special occasion, anniversary, cheat meal, whatever the case may be, right? Uh, going off, you know, um, let's say it's it's Sunday and your favorite sports teams and you want to get some beer, you want to get some wings, that's perfectly fine, you know, but doing some of these tips that we're going to go over right now before diving into the PowerPoint and then also at the end of the PowerPoint might be able to help you out as well. Remember, these are just pro tips. These are not mandatory. The first one is to hit your protein goal or go above it. Obviously, you guys know hitting your protein goal is super important when it comes to burning body fat because not only for the fact that it's going to help you build muscle, which is going to help you, you know, obviously speed up your metabolic rate, but it's higher up on the thermic effect of food. It's more satiating and it's going to help you out because the last tip on here is staying underneath your calorie target, which we're going to get into a little bit. The second tip is to make sure that you're drinking at least one gallon of water. Why? Well, at the end of the day, if we're kind of cutting down our calories the day before and the day after, you know, the water is going to help us feel a little bit more full. Same thing with that protein where it's going to make us feel fuller, longer and help us out. And then obviously the steps, you know, that's just helping getting everything, you know, from an active uh, perspective, kind of burning off those calories. So just remember, these are not mandatory by any means. These are just pro tips, you know, the day before, right? Let's say, you know, um, you're taking your spouse to special anniversary dinner, I don't know, Friday, right? I would focus on doing these tips maybe Thursday and then also Saturday just to kind of balance things out that we can just go right back on track. The next slide, right? This is where we're going to get into some great topics here. And this is where we are a big fan of what works best for you. As you guys know, with Heartletics, uh, we don't believe in cookie cutter, one size fits all, anything, right? Even when it comes to cheat meals or dining out, it's all about what works best for you. Personally, there's two different strategies here. And there's not, uh, hey, you should do this or hey, you should do this. It's regardless, right? What works best for you? There's plenty of times I'm doing the protein sparing strategy. And then there's other times where I'm focusing on a little bit of intermittent fasting. Now, Mark, you're the king when it comes to protein sparing strategy, brother. And you always talk about, um, you know, fitting in your favorite foods and, and doing so in a way where it's kind of like playing that food Tetris. 
but would you mind sharing with everybody a little bit more about the protein sparing strategy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, you know, when you're kind of looking at protein sparing versus, you know, intermittent fasting, protein sparing is just the one that works for me. Like you said, it's all about what makes the most sense for the individual. Um, so the concept behind protein sparing is actually pretty simple. Basically, what you want to do is, let's say you have an event, like, you know, we have Thanksgiving coming up soon, or, um, you know, an anniversary, birthday, celebration, whatever it is that's your special event, right? So you know that later in the day, um, you know, you want to be a little freer with, uh, you know, with what you're going to be doing, you know, enjoy that occasion. So leading up to that event, um, you eat pretty much, you know, as much as you can, nothing but protein. You know, and like it says on the slide, you have know, things like chicken, turkey, you know, lean meat, um, egg whites, uh, you know, uh, Greek yogurt, um, low fat or no fat cottage cheese, you know, and then protein powder, right? Protein shakes, protein powder. With the protein bars, you want to be a little careful because, um, you know, some of those, you know, you can be higher in the carbs and fats, depending on which one you select. And the idea is you want to kind of stay as much as possible to straight protein or, you know, with very little carbs and fats. The reason behind that is, right, let's face it, most of the time, the, you know, the enjoyment, so to speak, you know, in those occasions, a lot of it comes from carbs and fats. So by restricting yourself on those in the first part of the day, it gives you some freedom in the uh, part of the celebration or the occasion to kind of have some more of those types of foods. Also, you know, you're kind of building up towards your protein goal early. So that's one less thing you need to kind of think about when you are out at the, you know, the occasion, you're, you're able to kind of just be a little freer knowing that you're close to or at your protein goal before you even get to whatever that occasion is. And also you're, you know, filling yourself up because like you said, protein is more satiating. So, um, you know, by kind of, uh, you know, eating protein all day, you know, you're not going to get to whatever the occasion is, at, you know, in like this completely famished state where you kind of just go crazy with everything you see in front of you. So it's a strategy that I find, um, you know, works because it's reasonable. You're not, you know, you, you're eating, but you're eating sensibly in a way that's going to help you with uh, enjoying the, you know, the later part of the day. Yep. Um, yeah. Perfect. And then there's the other strategy, right? Yep. Perfectly said. And um, I, I like how you really talked about, you know, be careful the protein bars. Um, some of you guys, I always say this, pick a protein bar that's roughly around, you know, 200 calories to about 250 calories. Sometimes you'll see one that's like 300, 400 calories. And, you know, think about it. <clears throat> that's like a small meal almost when it comes to a calorie perspective. But the reason why I'm saying be careful is just because there's a lot of excess carbs and fats compared to something that's leaner and only protein like let's say protein powders or some of the other options on here. Now, on the flip side, we have intermittent fasting. And, and Jimmy, I, I know that you mentioned that you want to talk a little bit more about this, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if you don't know what intermittent fasting is, it's restricting your eating to a certain time uh, period. So typically there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, you could have a window of 12 hours, a lot of people do. So you would fast for 12 hours and then you have a 12 hour window to eat your calories for the day and get all your nutrition in. Um, some people do an eight hour window um, where you have that window to get your calories. And I used to do it and I, not very smartly, but I did like one meal a day where I tried to, but I wasn't, I didn't know about the protein and I wasn't as knowledgeable uh, when I did it. But uh, so basically you're trying to get all your nutrition in in a certain time period and the rest of the day you're fasting. Um, so basically you can have water, uh, things that don't have calories, water, black coffee, green tea, things that don't really have any calories in them. You can have throughout the day just to uh, curb that appetite, uh, make you feel full. That way you can make it to uh, make it to your window. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. The basic premise behind it is, you know, when you're fasting, I mean, there's a whole bunch of science behind it that Coach Joe will probably be smarter talking about it than me, but you're supposed to get into ketosis and, you know, it does all these things for your body. So they say, um, yeah, that's pretty much what intermittent fasting is in a nutshell. Yeah. That was, dude, Jimmy, that was great, man. That was really good. And, um, yeah, there is some science about like autophagy and, you know, 
Um, I don't want to say like that typically only happens after 24 hours, but there's other ways to affect autophagy in the body besides just intermittent fasting. Um, I, I will say this from a, a business owner perspective, I do like intermittent fasting because at the times when I'm grinding, um, let's face facts, I can just be very diligent and focus at work and not really focus on eating or taking time away from what I need to get done. And the reason why I have on here, just so everybody knows, water, black coffee, green tea, I'm sure you can find, <clears throat> you know, other sources on the internet that's going to say, hey, sparkling water is okay, or, you know, Splenda is okay, and, you know, BCAs are okay. I hear a lot of people talk about BCAAs, right, being okay. What you guys don't understand that is, even though something has zero calories on the back, sometimes like some of the chemicals, the ingredients inside can still trigger, right, a receptor going off to your brain saying, hey, this is, you know, basically we're, we're starting that digestion process and it's almost kicking us out of the fast. And that's not obviously what you want to do if your goal is to do intermittent fasting. And it's kind of a hit or miss on what you want to do. Um, Jimmy, I completely forgot that you did intermittent fasting actually before you signed up for Heartletics. And one of the biggest things that, uh, Jimmy, correct me if I'm wrong, but what most people do when they think about intermittent fasting, they think it's from the calories in versus calories out perspective. And so typically what happens is, you know, uh, they grind it out, they don't eat anything, right? And then they smash on whatever they want. But then typically what happens is they're way under on their calories and what they need to be doing and plus way under on their protein goal. So then it's really hard to you know, obviously burn body fat, but at the same time, from a metabolic perspective, sure, calories in versus calories out, but at the same time, it's like, hey, if you're not putting gas inside your car, how far is it really going to get you? Now, there are some pros and cons to both, actually. Um, you know, Mark, why don't you share a little bit about the protein sparing strategy, the pros and cons, and then Jimmy, you can kind of take away with the intermittent fasting pros and cons. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, some of the reasons that I prefer the protein sparing is, um, you know, like it says, you're less hungry, right? Protein is, you know, uh, going to be more satiating so that that way, um, you know, you get to your event not starving and not, you know, kind of, you know, ready to eat everything in front of you. Um, also, right, um, whatever you're doing, you still hopefully want to end the day, you know, at or above your protein goal. So if you're doing protein sparing, um, that kind of you know, sets you up in a better position where you're not, you know, kind of stuck trying to play catch up on the protein. Um, and, you know, it leaves you in a state where you're a little more thoughtful about what you're putting into your body, um, you know, uh, you know, and then, you know, because, um, you know, because you have had had protein all day, right, it does leave you with a little, you know, less calories, a little less headway than something like intermittent fasting. Um, which is the con, right? You're not, you don't have complete free reign. You still have, you know, um, you've eaten some stuff during the day. And so that's eaten into your, you know, calorie total, et cetera. But, um, you know, by doing it as protein sparing, you still have more headway on the carbs and fat. So it's a balance, a trade-off. Yeah. And Jimmy, what about the fasting? Yeah. Uh, for intermittent fasting, obviously, you know, like, like you said, you you have all your calories so because you didn't eat anything. So you can go and eat, you know, pretty much uh, whatever you want. You're going to smash some pizza, whatever. You're going to get that all in. Um, but the downside of that is it's, it's, it's going to be hard to hit your protein target, um, especially if you're like me and you, your protein target's like 300 something uh, to get that in in a short period of time. You have to really, you know, work to get that in. Um, so for some people it's hard, you know, to go throughout the day without eating, um, your body needs to adjust to that. Uh, I know right now, if I were to try it, it would be hard, but you know, your body adjusts to however it is, you're going to do it. Um, and then just going through, you know, through the day being tempted by certain things, maybe you pick, if you're at, uh, at home and your wife's cooking for the holiday and you're intermittent fasting, you can't, you know, grab a slice of that turkey or a piece of the skin from it, but you're going to be tempted to do that, especially if you're not eating. Um, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be really hungry. So, and I think just all in all, it's just makes it a little harder. It's the protein part is probably going to the hardest part about that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Let me make uh let me do this. Uh, 
There you go. Cool. You guys can still see me okay? Awesome. Nice. So I'll go back to that PowerPoint real quick. Um, but uh, from the protein sparing compared to, you know, intermittent fast, and I'll say it like this, if let's say you have 2000 calories, right? An individual has 2000 calories to play with. Obviously they have 2000 calories with intermittent fasting, but I don't know, at least when I've done it, right. If I'm going out to eat, the last thing I'm going to be looking for is like the healthy options, right? My eyes are bigger than my stomach. I want those fun foods. It's, it's hard for also some people, they might get headaches, right? Just like not eating. They might feel weak and kind of deprived throughout the course of the day. And then on the flip side, right? The protein sparing, um, obviously you don't have as many calories to play with, but in my opinion, it's a lot easier to manage because one, you're hitting your protein goal. Even if you go over on your calories, it's okay because uh, I think hitting your protein goal is, is very, very important. And also second, um, you're a little bit more mindful because you already have food in the system. You're already kind of hungry, right? Your eyes aren't bigger than your stomach. Now, Gabe, let's bring you onto the, the podcast, brother. Um, do you have anything that you want to kind of share? Because I know that you kind of dabble in a little bit with, you know, going out to eat and whatnot. Oh yeah, we I go out, you know, date nights with my wife. I the kids, you know, when the kids want to go out to have pizza and you know, when we go out to eat dinner, um we definitely have the I have to keep in mind that, you know, Friday weekend's coming, I gotta eat a little bit different. So i I usually what I do is I protein spar. I don't like the fasting. I like to eat. And like one of the beauties of knowing what to eat. I got to eat like I'm a Latino, so I like my rice and beans, you know, my rice and beans and steak. But I get to have that as long as I put it together the right way. I guess there's a wrong way and the right way to put foods, and I didn't know that. So like last night, I had, I love I love pasta. I made myself a big old pasta, or urban garlic chicken. It was delicious, you know. It's full of carbs. I love carbs. It's one of my favorite foods to eat. So, but when it comes into the weekends, you know, I eat a little different. I don't have to not eat what I want. I just eat different. So I'm always on the run. So I like my snacks. So I load up my snacks in my cooler. They're all like protein rich snacks, you know, low calorie, low fat, uh, and just paying attention to what I eat. It doesn't mean I can't eat what I want, but later on, you know, today's Friday. Later on when I go out tonight, you know, I get to go out with my wife and my family, and, you know, I'll have a glass of wine and I'll have whatever I want because, you know, I have saved up all those calories and I'm all caught up with my protein. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, brother. Thank you for speaking, man. Um, let's go back to the screen share. All right. <clears throat> let's go back to where are we at here? All right, cool. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Let me get this bigger. There we go. Okay. Now, when it comes down to supplements, guys, just so you know this, this is just a, a tool to help guys out. This is not the end all be all. I always say it like this, that in terms of like a, a triangle, right? Like mindsets first, you guys already know that, right? And then calories, macronutrients, right? Training, a little bit of the needs, right? The recovery supplements, guys, just so everybody knows, does anywhere from two to like maybe 5%, right? Like very, very little. And honestly, you have to master the basics of everything first. There's never going to be a fat loss pill that's going to, to exist. That's going to take away, you know, everybody's pain and whatever, right? So just keep that in mind. But with that being said, here are a few different supplements to kind of help you out. I'll explain a little bit about them. Um, excuse my, my lack of English, I guess. I don't even know how to pronounce this one. Glucomannan, I don't know, whatever. But regardless, what it is, it's just, it helps you think about it in terms of like fiber, right? It's gonna help you make you feel fuller longer. So why is that beneficial? Well, think about it, right? If you're going out to eat, let's say, I don't know, Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving, or, you know, anniversary, it's easy to, you know, have some, uh, you know, whatever you want to pronounce this as, <laughs> and it's going to make you feel fuller. So once again, you're being more mindful. So that way you're not more tempted to, you know, smash on just all the desserts and have just a little bit of protein, um, fish oil, or any kind of honestly, like a healthy fat, I should say is great in a sense of just slowing down the digestion process, you know, and then digestive enzymes, obviously like that's super important, especially if it's just 
whole bunch of carbs and sugar, alcohol, just once again, kind of helping your body digest these properly. And then chromium. Um, Mark, I'm going to bring you on here real quick before I kind of share my thing. Um, what did you say in the, in the Facebook message about chromium that I absolutely loved? It's like the traffic cop for your um, digestive process. Basically, it's saying like, okay, carbs, you go here, your know, fats, you go here. So it's helping um, kind of streamline the digestive process and the, the metabolizing of those things properly so that you kind of, uh, you know, it's something that I take um, if I know I'm having like a, you know, a, a celebration night or something to kind of just say, okay, let's get this stuff cleared out as best as possible. Absolutely. The, the, I love that analogy. The analogy that I like to use all the time is uh, my very first job, guys, I worked in the movie theater and I was ripping tickets and like literally that was the best job ever, hands down. But imagine it's just like, it's just you. It's a brand new, you know, uh, world premiere movie. And like, there's a swarm of people, right? And there's only you. So it's just like, you're going to get bombarded. It's going to be kind of tough to manage everything like that. So think about that. Like if you go out to eat, have a cheat meal, anniversary, special occasion, whatever the case may be, you got all these carbs, fats, you know, protein coming into the system. Think about that chromium, just kind of like making sure everybody is in a single file line and just easier to rip those tickets and tell them, hey, go over here, go over here to the movies, go over here. It's the same thing kind of with chromium. You know, it helps out in a way where it's just telling the carbs, go over here, fats, go over here, protein, go over here. Um, I do want to say this, just an FYI, guys. Um, these are not like, oh, Joe has this on his podcast and this presentation. I got to buy these. I just found these off Google, right? Plain and simple. Like, I'm not saying that these brands, you have to go buy these brands. Do your own research when it comes to supplements. I'm, I'm not a sponsor by anything, okay? Just once again, they're just photos, okay? Now, as we're going back, remember when we started off the conversation today talking about, you know, before and after some pro tips, just remember, you know, the day before, you know, obviously focus on that, that protein goal or going above. I would recommend that, you know, especially if you're going to be doing that, make sure you have plenty of water, getting your steps in to just kind of aid in digestion, right? That's what the steps is. It's just helping your body keep moving. But if you realistically stay within, you know, 200 to 500 calories under that calorie target. So let's just say, I don't know, back to the 2000 calories, right? And let's just say uh, you're having about 1700 calories the day before and the day after, but you're able to hit your protein or go above if you can have that, you know, gallon of water or more, and then get those steps in. It's going to help you out in a, in a big sense, because uh, from a calorie perspective, we're, we're kind of saving a little bit more extra calories just for that one time where, you know, we can make sure we can have that special occasion. Now, I think it's time that we really get into the Heartletics special about why Heartletics is different. Because at the end of the day, yeah, this is a, a lot of great knowledge. This is a lot of great things that anybody can talk about. But at the end of the day, there's the mindset behind that. Coach Jeremy, would you mind kind of sharing everybody the mindset and, and really the things to remember? Man, this this is the this is the hardcore part of what Heartletics is all about. You know, the mindset is absolutely everything. So, you know, you've got all the tips, tricks, and tools here just given to you. But say you just you run off the rails and you decide to smash two pumpkin pies and half the turkey. You know, you had a bad day. Don't let that ruin you. Don't carry that with you because you're gonna feel guilty. You're gonna feel shame behind it. Oh, what did I do? I tore everything up. And if you get in that mindset, you're just going to keep pulling yourself down. And you're going to keep giving up. Look at it this way. You're setting down your nutrition goal for a day and you're picking up time with your family. If it's the holidays or maybe it's date night, like Gabe going out with his wife, he can set that down. He's planned for the day. He's done what he needed to do. Now he can crush those foods he needs to do. But the next day you get right back on track. There's no guilt, shame or anything else about having some holiday fun festivities with your family. You got to do it. So you can't let that get control of you. And say, you know, okay, I'm going to stay on track. I'm going to do what I need to do. But man, I'm just lost what I do. And if you're there with your family, coaches 24-7, 365, man, you can take a picture of your holiday spread and send over. And it's a race between Mark and Joe to see who's going to reply. <laughs> who's going to tell you what's best to eat off your holiday spread? The menu you're setting in front of at the restaurant, it doesn't matter. These guys are going to be there 24-7 to let you know what the best choices are. So you've got that access no matter what. So 
stay playing, stay focused, keep doing what you're doing. You know, all these coaches, man, there, there's a wolf pack here of coaches that are here to help you out. And guys, if you don't get what the wolf pack is, man, Joe's got a podcast that's going to fire you up about that. Because here's the thing. When I started out this, I was the weak wolf in the front. And I had these guys behind me to push me and get me where I needed to go. Now I'm moving back in that pack because we were all here to get you back. And for anybody that's already Heartless member, they know anytime, day or night, these coaches are going to be there for you through the struggles, through the hard times, whatever it is. Okay. If you're not a member, what are you waiting on, man? With the wolf pack like this behind you, we're going to get you where you need to go. You've got the support. Love it. Absolutely love it. I love the shirt also, Jeremy. Why don't you go ahead and lift that up? I, I guess I should have changed my shirt. I'm wearing a donut shirt and you're over here moving forward, right? I love it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, guys, this is very simple. And, and Jeremy hit home with it, right? Realistically, think about it like this. There's 365 days out of the year. Let's just let's just say 65 days, right? You got some cheat meals, you got some holidays, anniversaries, whatever the case may be, right? Every dog has its day, you know? So realistically, if you just, let's just say 65 of those days are bad, well, hey, it's still 300 good days. That's a lot better than 65, you know, bad days. It's the 80-20 rule that we always talk about, always apply, but it's more about the mindset. You know, I so I know so many people that they feel guilty the next day and, you know, they just feed the bad wolf, right? And Jeremy, you kind of, you know, hit home about that, about that wolf pack itself, making sure that we're all in this together. And I've seen this plenty of times as well as you guys, where if somebody has a bad day, what do they do? They go inside the community group. They kind of voice their like, hey guys, I need some help. I, I messed up. And instead of, you know, us, you know, bashing that person, like, oh, you should have stuck to the plan harder. Like, come on, man, willpower. It's like, no, it's like, hey, at the end of the day, like we all mess up, we all make mistakes. But here's the love, the support, everything that you're going to get with Heartletics inside the community groups itself to make sure that the next day you go right back on track, feeding the good wolf. And I promise you guys, that's how you're going to get sustainable results. So coaches, Gabe, thank you so much for presenting and talking today. I really, really appreciate it, um, especially because I don't have too much of a voice right now. So I'm really, really thankful and grateful for that. And I really hope that if you guys are, you know, watching this, you know, on YouTube or listening to this on Spotify or podcast. If you got any value at all, just share this with a friend, share this with a family member. We got the holidays coming up, right? And there's always going to be special times where, you know, you're going out, you're eating your favorite foods, or you want to go to a new restaurant with your spouse, have some alcohol, have some food. It's perfectly fine. Just really focus on some of the strategies that we talked about, have the right mindset. And then most importantly, hey, if you guys need some extra assistance, Go to heartletics.com. We got a free Facebook, uh, excuse me, a free fat loss guide. We, I should say that, Jeremy, right? We do have a free Facebook group, right? But that's for Absolutely. only guys, right? So if you're you're female listening to this, I'm sorry. Jeremy's not going to let you in. Jeremy runs that group. He's he's the man that owns that. So if you guys want to join, <laughs> type in Heartletics on Facebook. And uh, with that being said, as always, guys, this has been Coach Joe with the other coaches.